Are you all right to be up and about? Yeah. I'm all healed up. Sincere apologies. If I hadn't attempted to destroy the Aegis, they would never have... If you'd done nothing, they'd have come for her anyway. You're not to blame, Your Majesty. It's... my fault. Five hundred years ago, this kingdom was rent in twain. Some followed Adam, who sought to live with blades and titans as equals. Others opposed him, preferring to consider humans as the masters and titans as our tools. When Adam returned to the Aether, his rivals seized power, leveraging the power of the Omega Fetter. They declared themselves the Tantalese Royal Dynasty. Claiming they were the hero Adam's descendants? Precisely. My ancestors merely used the name of the beloved Adam in order to win over the people. Hmm. Before long, we resolved to protect ourselves from meddlesome foreigners by descending deep into the Cloud Sea, taking the dirty secret of our family's lineage with us. The Praetorium, for their part, did not protest. Can you guess why? No. They offered to stay silent in exchange for a certain resource. An annual tribute comprising a fixed quantity of core chips. <gasps> I have something I wish to show you. What is it? What is this? This is Gembo's ether flow. The Titan draws in the fabric of the Cloud Sea and uses it as a source of energy. This energy flows throughout the Titan's body in the form of ether. Refining and crystallizing this ether creates core chips. This process is what you see before you. So in other words, you're siphoning away a portion of the Titan's energy. Our cold climate and poor harvests, they are the unfortunate side effects of this process. I think I'm beginning to understand. Core chips are vital to every nation's military and energy policies. The Praetorium desired this power. How come? All rest at the time was in crisis. But for the Praetorium, it was a precious chance to expand their sphere of influence. So they messled in. As a result, Tantal fell into a chronic energy shortage. Then, well, you saw for yourselves. Near frozen earth, failing crops, the Tantalese people are forced to live in abject poverty. So why not just leave the Cloud Sea? Genbu can move, right? Just go somewhere warmer. They fear contact with other nations. Too afraid it might expose the truth behind the legends they spun about Adam. That would explain their isolationism. Indeed. That was five centuries ago. Now the Aegis has awakened the Praetorium is demanding we hand over the Omega Fetter. They are threatening to reveal our secret if we do not acquiesce. Indola? Threatening you? I get it now. That's what was in that letter. Enough was enough. I couldn't stand by and let the Tantalese people suffer any longer. Therefore, I made a decision. And that's why you... Yes. I knew there was a chance that the Praetorium would use the Aegis against us. 
But if I could neutralize her power, perhaps we would stand a chance of opposing them. And perhaps by saving my people from poverty, I could absolve the sins of my forefathers. You didn't think about using the Aegis's power yourself? Wielding such power is beyond my means. I am under no illusions. However, does the same apply to you? I felt something. When I looked in your eyes, I knew. Perhaps you are the one to whom we can entrust the Aegis's power. Father. In the end, it seems I only managed to make things worse. I can blame nothing but my own judgment. This tome records the deeds of the hero Adam. According to this, he saved the world from destruction using a white sword, and then disappeared along with a red sword. White and red? It must mean Mithra and Pyrus swords. Whoever wrote this must have had a personal connection to Adam. And, most curiously, after Adam disappeared, the author of this book went looking for something. Something. The third Aegis sword. There's a third? Apparently, this sword was as transparent as diamond and gave off a clear, brilliant light. But Adam went his whole life without using the sword. In fact, he could not use it. What do you mean, couldn't? The sword was simply too powerful. Even he, the legendary hero, could not contain the power it commanded. And thus, fearing its power, he sealed it away somewhere. The author, therefore surmised that this sword alone was the one true sword of the Aegis. Now, Rex, you were defeated by Jin. Doubtless that man is a powerful warrior. But even so, can this be right? Can the Aegis herself truly be outmatched by a single opposing blade? Would it not make more sense to presume that you lost because you have yet to unlock the true power of the Aegis? You mean... I'm the one who's been holding them back? Your Majesty, where is that sword? We have to... we have to find it somehow. We have to find that sword and rescue Pyro and Mithra. Regrettably, the book does not specify the sword's location. But there must be. However, reading between the lines, it seems the author suspected that the sword lies somewhere in Mithra. It's not much, but that's where I would begin the search. In Lefteria. Are you ready? Huh? Are you ready to do what it takes to be their true driver? Grams? Well, are you Rex? Yes! Of course. I'm going to be the driver that Pyra and Mithra deserve. And then, I'm going to take them to Elysium. Then come with me. I'll show you the way.
my son. Yeah? I have a favor to ask of you as your king. Well, that's a first. Are you feeling okay, old man? Maybe you're coming down with something. The Aegis needs... No, rather, the boy needs protection. You mean Rex? Yes, I saw something in that boy's eyes. A light that must never go out. <laughs> Steady on, old man. People get the wrong idea. Fine, leave it to me. Thank you. Nah, it's not like I wasn't gonna go with them anyway. You really can't judge a book by its cover. Who'd have thought that sweet-looking girl would threaten to destroy herself. Didn't she realize taking her own life would mean the boy died too? Oh, she knew exactly what she was doing. The whole thing was a bluff then? No, not at all. The reason she gave her core crystal to the boy was to replace his heart after Jin put paid to it. An Aegis core encodes the blueprints for all life. She took advantage of that. Incredible. I had no idea such a thing was possible. Aegis's truly are a breed apart. Cores are constantly accumulating data about the outside world. The fact that their injuries are mirrored is a result of their twin cores exchanging information. If you wanted to be poetic about it, you could say that their very lives are intertwined. But there's nothing to stop her from severing that link. What do you mean? Before issuing the kill order to the Artifice, she would have transferred the remainder of her core to the boy. Letting him live on, heart complete. And Aegis can survive for a short time without a core crystal. Don't ask me why. It's just how we were made. Ah, uh, so that's the reason Jin agreed to her terms. He couldn't care less about the boy. But he wasn't about to lose this one. Simple as that. <laughs>